Hey, what's happening YouTube? It's Richard, founder of Short Term Rental University and Airbnb Superhost. And today I'm coming to you from Nosara, Costa Rica with 12 tips that you can take today to add profitability to your short term rental business immediately and in the future. So this is really applicable to you no matter where you are in your journey. Even if you haven't started, I want you to start thinking about adding some of these ideas and services because the sooner you get started thinking about it, the sooner you'll actually do it. And if you are in your business currently and you don't have enough money to scale or get that second or third place, here are some ideas that you can implement immediately without any real resource. Start generating more profitability. I encourage you to save it and use these savings towards your future purchase. So let's get right into it. So I've taught in the past about expense management. You want to keep your expenses down. That's pretty obvious, pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing you can do is you can increase your revenue and that's really critical. So the variables that are there are your occupancy rate, the rate, your average daily rate per night. And then the third thing you can do is add ancillary services. So you're increasing the revenue per paying customer assuming already that you've got the occupancy and you're using dynamic pricing. Again, I'm a big fan of beyond pricing. So let's just assume that you've got the right occupancy and the right prices, so you can't really dial that up anymore for more profitability, and you can't scale to grow your business, so this is the video that you want. Here are some things that you can do. And how did I come up with this list? I modeled the masters, and what I mean by that is I was looking for a great place to stay in Hawaii. I'm going there next month with Erica, and I was looking through it, and I saw on the Airbnb app they have Airbnb Plus. I filmed videos on Airbnb Plus in the past, and they now have Airbnb Lux, which is a business that they bought, and they're now introducing into uh, their platform, and that's their super upscale place. And so I said I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. I clicked on it to learn more about it, and in addition to all of their beautiful verbiage about how they handpick and 300 data points to find all the right places and so on, they also offer additional services. So it's meant to add value above and beyond just the four walls. Like we often talk about, create an experience, add some more value, do these other things. Well, rather than invent the 12 things that you should do and share them with you, we're just going to follow Airbnb's lead in their newest offering, the Lux, which is spelled L-U-X-E, um, and we're going to go through some of these items, and you can implement them all yourself in your own location, at your own pace, whether you do one or you do them all, it's really consistent with what motivates you, what your neighborhood requires, what your listing affords itself towards, but no pressure to do all of them, just do one, get started. Here's how you can grow your business without any more expenses, just following the masters. Here's what Airbnb offers in their Airbnb Lux, and let's get right into it. So the first one I've actually done in the past, and it's offer housekeeping. Right now, most Airbnb hosts offer housekeeping at turnover only. The place is clean when people check in. It gets dirtied while they're there. Then the cleaning team comes in for the next guest. Well, I've had some extended stays, and some of my guests have actually wanted to pay for cleaning. The beautiful thing is I have the cleaning team, and guess what? My cleaning team, like your cleaning team, probably wants more work, not less work. So if the guests are willing to pay for cleaning while they're there, why not offer it? And again, I use my cleaning fees to pay my uh, employees a living wage, make sure that they're comfortable, pay for some of the costs of the materials to clean, and I have some wiggle room in there. It's not particularly profitable, but it is a profit center, and I also make sure that the place is you know, maintained and upkept, so if you have people that are there for an extended period of time, it enhances their experience, it keeps your place orderly and maintained, and you'll make a small profit if you do this correctly. Another thing that Airbnb offers is airport transfers. In this day and age with Uber, I'm not sure it's really important, but if you have a place that's hard to get to or off the beaten path or you have somebody who wants to uh, align with you, you can get what's known as an affiliate commission by working with a local taxi company, transportation provider, limo service. Again, you're not going to get rich on this stuff, but it's about adding more value to your guest experience, differentiating yourself from your competitors, and making a little bit of money consistently. Uh, similarly, they offer car rentals. Uh, maybe the way to go for something like this is Turo, T-U-R-O. I've rented from them in LA. I rented a Mustang convertible, and that's an entrepreneur who instead of you know, sharing his home is sharing his car. If you do something like that, make sure you've got all your liability and insurance. And I just want you to be smart entrepreneurs, but there's some money to be made. Fresh groceries. When I rent villas down in St. Bart's, they send me a list of items that I can put in the villa in advance of my arriving. So if I want 
You know, I don't drink, but it could be beer and wine, it could be cheese platters, fresh fruit, whatever you need, offer it to your guests and say, I'll stock your fridge when you come in. It's whatever you want there and mark all of that up. Um, generally speaking, you should mark things up more than you think. Your time is valuable. So if you're going to do this or you're going to outsource it to somebody, make sure that you're being paid for your time and charge a premium. Somebody who wants that service isn't looking to get the most uh, inexpensive service. They're willing to pay for your time, your knowledge, and get the right stuff. So you can offer fresh groceries. Child care. If you have people that travel as a family and they're coming to your place, well, maybe they're attending a reunion or a football game or something like that, and there's a couple of periods and there's a couple of hours when they don't want the kids because they've got something else to do. Whether you or a neighbor or somebody else or you partner with a child care provider, offer child care. You could make a little bit of money on that. The next one I think is pretty obvious and we've probably done this ourselves. Offer a chef. Have somebody come in using their own like, you know, menus and skill set and so on and say, we'll have a private chef come to the villa, prepare a meal for you and this is what it costs. Again, you mark that up and or the chef pays you a commission. So it's enhancing the guest experience and it's helping you profitability wise as well. This next one, I think you have to be a little bit more upscale and I'm not sure exactly what it means, but I'm gonna share it with you because Airbnb thinks it's important and that's the purpose of this video, a butler. So go ahead and get Wilfred or whoever all buttoned up and ready to go and provide a butler. Um, similarly, a driver. Again, I'm not sure that that's something that's uh, required now with Uber, but if you live in a place where there's day tours and so on, partner with a local transportation company and have people give people the opportunity to have a car and driver for the day and tour around. Um, restaurant concierge have the ability to help people make restaurant reservations, restaurant reservation recommendations, just really facilitating to ensure that they have a great time when they stay at your home and in your community and making it easier. And you're not necessarily going to make a lot of money from the restaurant reservations, but you could probably partner with some local restaurants who'd be happy to give you, you know, free meals yourself when you go there because you sent them X number of guests or whatever. Just be creative. Um, spa services, you know, again, maybe you have a, a spare bedroom and you can connect with somebody who comes to the home with a fold out table and they offer massages or right here, you know, like there's no reason it couldn't happen right here. So just start to think about the different product offerings that you have and why people come and what people might want to do and then just partner with people. Equipment rental, um, maybe people don't want to travel with, I don't know, their skis or their snowboard or their golf clubs or their surfboard and so now you have a partnership with somebody that offers high quality equipment for rent. And again, you get a referral fee when you find somebody like that. And then the last one that they offer is family gear. And this might be high chairs and cribs and pack and plays and toys and stuff like that. If you have a lot of families traveling, you don't necessarily have to like stock it all at your expense and have it there at their disposal. But maybe you partner with somebody in your area that that's their business and they come and they deliver it all. And then when this group leaves, they take it all away and they clean it all up and sanitize it. And like, you don't have to do very much in any of this, right? These are ancillary services that you partner with people, they do their expertise, you take either an affiliate commission from them or you mark it up a little bit. And again, it's not about getting rich quick, but all of this stuff adds up. If it adds $100 of profitability in a month, that's $1,200 in a year, and then you add a second service or a third and you start to increase and you start to save and you reinvest that, before you know it, $1,000 a year, you'll have $10,000 or $20,000 saved up and that can make a big dent towards your next purchase. So I want you to contemplate it and I want you to think about which of these services you want to add and in what order and experiment with it. I think you'll have more success than you think. Look, if this sounds really interesting to you and you're committed to grow your business to that next level, join me November 2nd and 3rd at STRU Live in Miami where we will go deep and I'm committed to help you get to that next level. Let's go. So if you don't know exactly where to get started, I have an expert who is actually in the services business in a prior life and she's here to join us. So Erica, come please help the audience. How do you find people like this? And I can think of nobody better than <laughs> Erica who used to run basically a very high-end concierge type service and would get requests like this from the who's who in Jackson Hole, billionaires flying in. And how would you go ahead and find any of these service providers? Where do you start? Well, what I would say is reach out to those that either execute at your level or higher. So for example, a number of times people reached out to me and they were traveling. They said, you know, we're going to 
you know, Miami or we're going to um, Aspen and we need this, this, this and this. Well, I don't have relationships necessarily in Aspen. Um, so what I would say is reach out to someone in Aspen that would know. Well, if you want to execute at a Four Seasons level, reach out to the Four Seasons. Speak to someone at the concierge desk. They're so helpful. They're so knowledgeable. They're so friendly. They know the area and they work with the best. So ask questions, you know. Um, develop a relationship with them have you know create enough value where they're invested in your success right and so if you say hey i have you know these guests that are coming and i want to deliver x you know can you share with me who you would use nine times out of ten that they will do that the other option too is <laughs> find a me in the area there are so many um concierge businesses and personal assistants, executive assistants that are not affiliated with one client, but with numerous. And so if you can kind of get them on contract or retain them and say, hey, I've got, you know, these three properties in, you know, my area. And when my guests come and stay, you know, at this house or this house or, you know, whatever, or just even the one property, but you're wanting to provide that lux accommodation, right. have them at the ready, you know, so, so that basically they are a resource and they can answer all of those questions and, and assist and step in as needed, but it's not you doing it. It's, you know, someone else who is um, skilled and happy and um, available really talented at it. Right. So let me ask uh, two quick questions for yeah. you. You listened to all of those 12 suggestions. Yes. In your experience, have you been asked to provide any of those 12, all of those 12? Yes. What about like the cribs and the gear rental? Absolutely. And a great example. There's, there is a company, a business in Jackson that has all of that. That's what they do. And they come and they bring off, bring high chairs and cribs and play pins and, um, you know, booster seats, whatever it is that you need, provide it in the home, and then, you know, they come and pick it up, you know, when the, when the guests leave. And you would be surprised, you know, the number of resources that are out there uh, that you can utilize. Exactly. To make second, your life easier and to make your guest life easier. And then the second question I would have is, to some degree, this was your prior job, right? Like yes. a, a very high-end um, concierge, executive assistant, I don't know what language you describe, but mm -hmm. you did all of this. And Absolutely. I think you did quite well, right? Like there is money to be made in this. We're not Absolutely. telling people like, go make no money, right? Like this was right. how you fed yourself and how you lived and thrived. Absolutely. So people can Absolutely. make some money on they the side gig of their side gig. <laughs> they absolutely can, they absolutely can. I mean, and it got too big for just me. I had to hire, you know, additional people and, and grow my team. So there, it, it is a thing. <laughs> and one of the things that I taught the attendees in, in Nashville is as Airbnb grows, be entrepreneurial and start to think outside the box and create services and businesses. There's a whole ecosystem that will rise as a result of the size and the, you know, how great Airbnb is for so many people. So maybe some of you will have more success in this service thing than you have in renting your own home. And maybe that's where you go, but just keep your mind right. open, right? Or think of things beyond those 12 things. Exactly. Florists, um, hair salons, um, you know, all there's any number of different things. Personalized shopping. I mean, just tours, right? The, the right. Airbnb experience, but not what Airbnb is currently doing. Ski or snowboard tuning. Just an unbelievable amount right. of opportunities. So for those of you that are listening and watching this video, please go ahead and comment below. What additional services do you offer? How much money have you made? Give us all ideas. We're not in competition with one another. We're actually peers. That's a beautiful part of the community. So you might leave a comment here about what you've done and somebody leaves a different comment and that helps you. You implement right. it. You make $5,000 a year more and we all grow. So comment below. Please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. But just recognize if you're currently capital constrained and you can't scale because you don't have enough money, there are things that you can do right now to grow yourself and to grow your business and to grow your opportunity set. You just have to be entrepreneurial and keep your mind open. And we hope you found this video helpful. So like it and subscribe.